Bruce Cabot may not be a household name, but his contributions to Hollywood's golden era are not to be overlooked. Collaborating with the likes of John Wayne, this actor made a name for himself in Tinseltown. However, his path to stardom was far from smooth. Errol Flynn, another prominent figure of the time, held a notable grudge against him. The reasons behind their animosity are as surprising as they are intriguing. But the real mystery lies in why Bruce Cabot never reached the summit of Hollywood, despite his undeniable talent. There was something amiss, something that prevented him from reaching the highest echelons of fame. Join us as we delve into the life and career of this fascinating actor, uncovering the truth behind his enigmatic journey in Hollywood. Bruce Cabot, the actor known for his rugged good looks and commanding presence, had a darker side that often emerged in his personal life. His demons followed him like a shadow, turning him into a real-life villain. Born on April 20, 1904, Cabot's early years were marked by adventure. He worked as a tramp steamer and even hauled bones on the prairies. But it was his stint as a gold smuggler during World War II that truly shocked those who knew him. Cabot's gold smuggling operation was not for the enemies, but rather a way to take advantage of the Middle Eastern gold prices. It was a glittering advantage that he couldn't resist, even if it meant breaking the law. The twist in Cabot's story is a reminder that even those we admire on the silver screen can have a darker side. His life was a whirlwind of adventure, but it was also marked by controversy and scandal. Despite his darker tendencies, Cabot's career in film spanned over four decades. He appeared in over 100 films, including classics like King Kong and The Searchers. His rugged charm and commanding presence made him a favorite among directors and audiences alike. But even off-screen, Cabot's darker side was never far from the surface. His personal life was marked by scandal and controversy, and he often found himself in the headlines for all the wrong reasons. In the end, Cabot's legacy is a complex one. He was a talented actor with a commanding presence, but he also had a darker side that could not be ignored. His life was a whirlwind of adventure, scandal, and controversy, but it was also a testament to his enduring talent and charisma. Bruce Cabot, an actor from the golden age of Hollywood, found success playing the bad guy or the hero who saves the day. In those roles, articulate speech wasn't always necessary, and a few grunts often sufficed. Despite this, Cabot had a remarkable career path and frequently collaborated with the legendary John Wayne. In the early years of his career, Cabot appeared in several films, including the iconic King Kong in 1933. He played the role of Captain Inglehorn, the captain of the ship that transports the crew to Skull Island. Cabot's character was a crucial part of the film's plot, and his performance was well received. Later in his career, Cabot transitioned to playing villains in Western films, often alongside John Wayne. The two actors had a strong on-screen chemistry, and Cabot's performances as the antagonist added depth and complexity to Wayne's heroic characters. Despite his success as a villain, Cabot was not limited to playing one type of role. He was an eager collaborator and took on various characters throughout his career. His ability to adapt to different roles and work well with other actors made him a valuable asset in the film industry. In conclusion, Bruce Cabot was a talented actor who made a significant impact in the golden age of Hollywood. His contributions to the film industry are still celebrated today, and his legacy continues to inspire aspiring actors. Bruce Cabot was a respected actor during his time, but he wasn't a top-tier star in his era. This is not to diminish his achievements. He did, after all, earn credits in over 100 films. However, when one thinks of the stars of his time, his name doesn't usually come up first. It's a bit of a mystery, really. He was good-looking, tall, and had a physique that screamed leading man. So why didn't he become a bigger star? Luck, perhaps, or maybe it was his height that worked against him. Cabot started his career in the early 1930s and quickly became a familiar face in Hollywood. He played a variety of roles, from leading men to supporting characters. His performances were always solid, and he had a commanding presence on screen. Yet, he never quite reached the level of stardom that some of his contemporaries did. In films like King Kong and The Last of the Mohicans, Cabot held his own against more established stars. He was a reliable performer who could be counted on to deliver a solid performance. But for some reason, he never became a household name. It's a shame, really, because he had all the qualities of a leading man. Even in his later years, Cabot continued to work in film and television. He never stopped acting, even when he wasn't a big star. He was a professional who loved his craft, and that shows in his body of work. Today, his films are considered classics, and he is remembered fondly by those who worked with him and by his fans. In the end, 
Bruce Cabot may not have been a top-tier star, but he was a respected actor who left behind a legacy of solid performances. His career is a testament to his talent and his love for acting. He may not have been a big star, but he was a star in his own right. Bruce Cabot, the actor, wasn't known for his heartthrob appearance like Tab Hunter. While Hunter was a matinee idol, famous among young women, Cabot didn't enjoy the same status. His looks didn't grant him the same adoration, but that didn't stop him from having a successful career. In contrast, Tab Hunter's heartthrob status was short-lived. He was soon replaced by other actors, demonstrating the fleeting nature of such fame. For Cabot, his career was built on more than just his looks. One could argue that Cabot's height played a role in his career trajectory. Lex Barker, another actor, was often typecast due to his height. He became the perpetual Tarzan, a role he didn't always want to play. But, like Cabot, he didn't have much choice. Work was scarce, and he had to take what he could get. Despite not being a heartthrob, Cabot still made a name for himself in the industry. His career was a testament to his talent and dedication, not just his appearance. He proved that you don't need to be a heartthrob to be successful in Hollywood. After finding success as Tarzan, Lex Barker grew eager to take on more challenging roles. However, his ambitions led to conflict with the director of his final Tarzan film, Tarzan and the She-Devil. Determined to maintain the character's traditional image, the director, Saul, clashed with Barker, who envisioned a more dynamic portrayal. In a fit of pettiness, Saul cut many of Barker's lines from the film, diminishing his role. Despite this, Barker's appeal as Tarzan remained strong, and the movie was a box office hit. Unfortunately, the actor's career as Tarzan ended, and he struggled to find work in Hollywood. The industry, often superficial, was reluctant to cast him in other roles, and Barker found himself typecast as the iconic jungle hero. With few opportunities in Tinseltown, Barker decided to try his luck in Europe. There, he found success in Italy, landing a significant role in a classic film. This experience marked a turning point in his career, and he continued to work in Europe, eventually becoming known as Old Shatterhand. Despite the setbacks he faced, Barker remained determined to prove his worth as an actor, refusing to let typecasting define him. His journey from Tarzan to Old Shatterhand serves as a testament to his resilience and adaptability in the face of adversity. Bruce Cabot's career in Hollywood was a curious thing. He didn't reach the same heights as Lex, but he didn't completely falter either. Unlike Lex, who had to leave Hollywood to keep his career alive, Bruce found success without ever having to leave town. However, Bruce's career was not without its challenges. While Lex had to deal with clashing with directors, Bruce had to contend with film producers. Yet, unlike Lex, Bruce never got to be the leading man for long. He was often relegated to playing the supporting man. It's hard to say whether Bruce liked playing the supporting role or not. Maybe he did, maybe he didn't. But one thing is clear, something was fundamentally wrong with the man's career. He should have taken more risks and exerted more control over his career. It's a shame really. Bruce had the talent and the looks to be a leading man, but he never got the chance to truly shine. His career was a series of missed opportunities and unfulfilled potential. In the end, Bruce Cabot's career was a curious enigma. He had the talent and the opportunities, but something held him back. It's a reminder that even in Hollywood, success is not guaranteed, and that sometimes, taking risks and exerting agency is the only way to truly succeed. Bruce Cabot's acting career was significantly boosted by the support of his friends. He was fortunate to have people in his life who were willing to help him succeed in the competitive world of film. The actor was grateful for their assistance, but there was one friend in particular who would later betray him in the most devastating way. Cabot's friends were always there for him, offering encouragement and assistance whenever he needed it. They helped him land acting roles and provided him with the support he needed to thrive in the industry. Without their help, it's possible that Cabot may not have achieved the same level of success. The actor was well aware of the role his friends played in his success. In interviews, he often spoke about how grateful he was for their support. He recognized that their help was instrumental in getting him to where he was in his career. However, despite the support he received from his friends, there was one person who would later betray him in a way that would have a lasting impact on their relationship. This friend, who had once been close to Cabot, lent him a helping hand, but the actor responded with a devastating betrayal. The details of the betrayal are not fully known, but it was significant enough to cause a rift in their friendship. Cabot was deeply hurt by the betrayal and never fully recovered from it. Despite this setback, however, he continued to work in the film industry and remained a respected actor until the end of his career. 
In the end, Bruce Cabot's success as an actor was due in large part to the support of his friends. While one friend would later betray him, the actor was still grateful for the help he received from others. Without their support, he may not have achieved the same level of success in the film industry. Ichin Palacier Jacques Dubujac, a name that proved to be quite a mouthful for Hollywood producers, it was much easier to give the actor the name Bruce Keba. Reports even claim that it was David O. Selznick who bestowed this new name upon the actor. Bruce was born on April 20, 1904, in Carlsbad, New Mexico. His father, Major Attenda Palicia Bujak Sr., was a well-known local lawyer at the time. Sadly, Bruce wouldn't have the chance to know his mother, Julia Almondine Graves, as she passed away shortly after giving birth to him. Despite the challenges that came with his birth name, Bruce Cabot proved to be a name that would become synonymous with classic Hollywood cinema. The actor's career spanned over four decades, and he appeared in over 100 films, including the iconic King Kong in 1933. Bruce's career began in the early 1930s, and he quickly became a familiar face in Hollywood. He appeared in various films, including westerns, dramas, and comedies. His rugged good looks and commanding presence made him a favorite among directors and audiences alike. Throughout his career, Bruce worked with some of the biggest names in Hollywood, including John Wayne, Clark Gable, and Betta Davis. He even had the opportunity to work with Orson Welles in the classic film, The Lady from Shanghai. Bruce Cabot's career was a testament to his talent and versatility as an actor. He left behind a legacy that continues to inspire and entertain audiences to this day. Despite the challenges that came with his birth name, Bruce Cabot proved that a name is just a label, and it's what you do with it that truly matters. Bruce Cabot, the actor, hailed from a family with a rich background. His grandfather, a lawyer, had an impressive knowledge of mining. The actor's father, following in his father's footsteps, was a poster boy for American patriotism. After graduating from Cumberland School of Law near Nashville, Tennessee, he joined the U.S. Army during the Spanish-American War and the Philippine-American War. Once his military service concluded, the actor's father settled in Carlsbad and raised a family. The elder Cabot's experiences during his time in the military and his legal background must have significantly influenced Bruce Cabot's upbringing, providing a solid foundation for his future career in Hollywood. Despite his family's background, Bruce Cabot remained far removed from the trappings of the film industry, creating a unique and interesting contrast. Bruce Cabot, born Bruce Thomas Patterson, came from a family where a law career or military service would have been the expected path. After graduating from Suwannee Military Academy, the actor surprised everyone by not studying law. Instead, he attended the University of the South in Suwannee, Tennessee. However, he didn't complete his university education, choosing instead to follow his dream of becoming an actor. The road to stardom wasn't easy for Cabot. He had to work various jobs to make ends meet. He found work on steamers, bleaching bones of animals from prairies, and selling newspapers. His career in real estate, cotton selling, and sailing work were all steps towards his ultimate goal. But that's not all. He also sold cars, worked as a printing salesman, and even had a stint at a slaughterhouse. Despite the challenges, Cabot's determination never wavered. He pursued his passion for acting with unwavering dedication, taking on any job that came his way to support his dream. His journey is a testament to his resilience and commitment to his craft. After failing his first screen test, the actor Bruce Cabot didn't lose hope. He continued to work in a cafe, while also pursuing his dream in the background. One day, at a Hollywood party, he had the opportunity to meet David Selznick, the central producer of RKO at the time. Selznick was impressed by the determined man and agreed to help him arrange another screen test. Despite the initial setback, Cabot had an advantage this time. He could choose the play for his test. He picked Chicago, a play he had watched several times. However, when he got on stage, he realized that watching a play was very different from acting in it. His performance was far from perfect, but Selznick saw potential in him and decided to offer him a contract. Despite the rocky start, Cabot's perseverance paid off, and he went on to have a successful career in the film industry. His story is a testament to the fact that failure is not the end, but rather an opportunity to learn and grow. The actor Bruce Cabot made his debut in the 1931 film Heroes of the Flame. Before this, he had an uncredited stint in Lady with a past as a dancer. It was in the 1934 film Roadhouse Murder that Cabot received a supporting part, a significant step in his career. However, at this point, the actor was still grappling with his career, trying to make sense of his path. 
Interestingly, Cabot's future great friend and helper, John Wayne, was already bossing it in the film industry. Wayne had delivered an excellent performance in Raoul Walsh's The Big Trail in 1930, after having previously been in 18 films. His performance in The Big Trail was sensational, setting the stage for his future success. Meanwhile, Cabot was auditioning for roles, one of which was for the 1932 film The Most Dangerous Game. This film was about a hunter who hunts people for fun on an island. Unfortunately, Cabot's audition for this film was unsuccessful. However, it was during this time that he got to know salesman Nick and met Mary and C. Cooper. These connections would later play a significant role in helping Cabot secure better film roles. Indeed, it was through these connections that Cabot landed his best film role yet. One that was a significant success in terms of box office. This film would become a classic, further solidifying Cabot's place in the film industry. In the early 1930s, the actor Bruce Cabot secured a breakthrough role in the film Ann Vickers. In this movie, he portrayed a soldier who seduces a naive woman, played by Irene Dunn, and leaves her pregnant before going off to war. This role, along with several others, served as a stepping stone for the actor, leading up to what would become his most iconic performance. Despite his success in these films, the actor never reached the same heights again in his career. However, one film would change everything for him. That film was King Kong, the classic monster movie that became a cultural phenomenon upon its release in 1933. Interestingly, the actor almost missed out on the opportunity to star in King Kong. The film's director, Marion C. Cooper, initially wanted to cast a different actor in the role of Jack Driscoll, the film's lead. However, after seeing Bruce Cabot's performance in Ann Vickers, Cooper changed his mind and offered the role to the actor. King Kong would become the biggest film in Bruce Cabot's career, and he would never come close to reaching the same level of success again. Despite this, the actor continued to work in Hollywood for several more decades, appearing in numerous films and television shows. In the end, Bruce Cabot's role in King Kong would become his most enduring legacy. The film would go on to become a classic of the monster movie genre, and the actor's performance would be remembered by audiences for generations to come. Bruce Cabot, the actor who would later become famous for his role in the classic film King Kong, was initially unsure of himself when he went in for the audition. He didn't see himself as a leading man and was very self-conscious about his acting abilities, in fact, he didn't even think he would be considered for the lead role. At the time, Bruce was primarily focused on just getting an acting career off the ground, and he didn't care if he was front and center in films or not. When he arrived at the audition for King Kong, he was about to leave when two men spotted him, David O. Selznick and Marion Cooper. Selznick and Cooper convinced Bruce to stick around and gave him some unexpected advice. They told him to forget about his inexperience and to audition for the role of Jack Driscoll which was the lead role in the film. They promised him a rewarding paycheck if he could just stand in the right place and do exactly what the director told him. Despite his initial doubts, Bruce decided to take their advice and audition for the role of Jack Driscoll. His willingness to take a chance on himself paid off, and he landed the part, which would go on to become one of his most iconic roles. The film would become a classic, and Bruce Cabot's performance would be remembered for generations to come. Bruce Cabot, an inexperienced actor, was cast in the film King Kong as the love interest of Anne Darrow, played by Faye Ray. The producers, Cooper and Selznick, took a significant risk by committing to him both financially and artistically. This decision proved to be a successful one, as the film became a major hit, and Archeo made millions of dollars. The actor's career also took off, and he became a star. However, as the actor would soon discover, breaking out was the easy part. Keeping the stardom alive was a bigger challenge, the film's success had put him in the spotlight, and he had to live up to the expectations. The actor's journey from being an unknown to a star was not an easy one, but he managed to sustain his stardom through his hard work and dedication. King Kong was a classic film that not only made the actor a star, but also became a cultural phenomenon. The film's success was a testament to the fact that taking risks can sometimes lead to significant payoffs. The actor's performance in the film was appreciated by the audience, and he became a household name overnight. The actor's journey in the film industry was just beginning, and he had many more challenges to face. But the success of King Kong had given him the confidence and the platform to showcase his talent. He had become a star, and he was determined to stay one. The actor's performance in the film had made him a favorite among the audience, and he had become a household name. 
In conclusion, the actor's success in King Kong was a significant milestone in his career. He had become a star overnight, and his performance in the film was appreciated by the audience. The film's success had given him the confidence and the platform to showcase his talent, and he had become a household name. The actor's journey in the film industry was just beginning, and he had many more challenges to face. But the success of King Kong had given him the confidence and the platform to take on those challenges. After his breakthrough role in King Kong, Bruce Cabot's star power was solidified. Marion Cooper, recognizing his talent, cast him in the film Flying Devils alongside Ralph Bellamy. In this film, Cabot took on the leading man role, further establishing his reputation in Hollywood. The movie also became a modest box office hit, contributing to the actor's continued success throughout the 1930s. During this period, Cabot was fortunate to star in 14 films, showcasing his versatility as an actor. Some of these films even allowed him to explore his villainous side, testing his acting skills in new ways. However, as the decade came to a close, the actor's fortunes began to shift. Despite the changes, Cabot's contributions to this classic era of cinema remain noteworthy. His ability to adapt to various roles and maintain his stardom is a testament to his talent and dedication to his craft. The films he starred in continue to resonate with audiences today, a reflection of his enduring impact on the world of cinema. The actor Bruce Cabot once auditioned for the lead role in the classic Western film Stagecoach. He had his eyes set on playing the Ringo Kid, a character that would become synonymous with the movie's success. However, fate had other plans. The director, John Ford, had other ideas and chose John Wayne for the role instead. This decision would catapult the Duke to the heights of Hollywood stardom, making him one of the most bankable names in the industry. Despite the initial setback, the actor didn't let it deter him. The disappointment of not landing the stagecoach lead role didn't keep him down for long. He continued to work in the industry, appearing in numerous films and shows, leaving his mark on this classic genre. The actor's career is a testament to his perseverance and dedication to his craft. Even though he didn't get the role he wanted, he didn't let it define him. Instead, he moved forward, taking on new challenges and making his mark in the industry in his own way. His story is a reminder that setbacks and disappointments are a natural part of life, but they don't have to define us. With hard work and determination, we can overcome them and achieve our goals. The actor, Bruce Cabot, met his future best friend, Errol Flynn, while working together on the epic western Dodge City. This film, directed by Michael Curtis, became one of Warner Brothers' biggest hits. Cabot and Flynn formed a close bond during the filming of Dodge City. Their chemistry on set translated seamlessly to the screen, creating a dynamic duo that audiences loved. The film's success solidified their status as leading men in Hollywood. However, their friendship was not without its ups and downs. Despite their camaraderie, Cabot betrayed Flynn in a shocking turn of events. The details of the betrayal are unclear, but it left a sour taste in Flynn's mouth. Despite their falling out, the two actors crossed paths again in their careers. They worked together on several more projects, although their relationship was never the same. Dodge City remained a classic western, and the collaboration between Cabot and Flynn was one of the film's highlights. The film's success launched both actors into further stardom, despite the challenges they faced in their personal and professional lives. After finding that roles weren't coming as frequently as he had hoped, the actor, Bruce Cabot, decided to follow in his father's footsteps and pursue patriotism. He joined the army in 1942, driven by a desire to contribute to the World War effort. Bruce Cabot underwent officer training at Miami Beach, where he proved himself to be a dedicated and capable student. His hard work paid off when he was promoted to the rank of first lieutenant in the U.S. Army Air Forces. The actor was then assigned to serve as an Airport Transport Command Operations Officer at El Awuni, Tunis in the second half of 1943. In this role, he played a critical part in managing the transportation of troops and supplies to and from the battlefield. Despite the challenges and dangers of serving in a war zone, Bruce Cabot remained committed to his duty and continued to serve his country with honor and distinction. His military service was a testament to his patriotism and his desire to make a positive impact on the world. Bruce Cabot, the actor, found himself in the midst of a gold smuggling incident during World War II. L. Fletcher Prouty, a high-ranking Air Transport Command officer, accused Cabot of smuggling gold from Germans to Brazil. However, it turned out that the accusations were false. In reality, Cabot was transporting gold on the instructions of other high-ranking Air Transport Command officers. 
they took advantage of the Middle Eastern gold prices to make a profit. When Kavat's smuggling was discovered, the army apprehended him in Cairo. Despite the incident, the military did not dishonorably discharge Kavat. Instead, they posted him to a remote desert outpost in Mauritania. There, he did odd jobs until he was discharged in 1944. However, the allure of Tinseltown was too strong for Cabot to resist. He returned to the film industry and continued his acting career. Despite his real-life villainous incident, Cabot remained a respected and beloved actor in Hollywood. Bruce Cabot, an actor who had become mainly unknown, found salvation when he met John Wayne on the set of Angel and the Bad Men. The two became fast friends, and Cabot became one of Wayne's regular co-stars. Their friendship extended beyond the set as they were also drinking buddies. Cabot appeared in a total of 10 more Wayne films, which lasted throughout the 1960s and early 1970s. Wayne's decision not to serve in the army during World War II worked out well, not only for him but for Cabot, who continued to find relevance in an industry that had almost left him behind. Their collaboration was mutually beneficial, with Wayne providing Cabot a steady stream of work, and Cabot bringing his own unique talent and charisma to each role. Together, they created classic films that are still enjoyed by audiences today. Cabot's career was resurrected thanks to his friendship with Wayne, and he will always be remembered for his contributions to these films. The actor's story is a testament to the power of friendship and the enduring relevance of classic cinema. When it came to John Wayne's decision not to join the United States World War II effort, the actor Bruce Cabot had mixed feelings. On one hand, Cabot admired other actors like Gable and Stewart who were eager to fight for their country. Gable, in particular, was so keen that he rejected the arrangement of working in the Army's motion picture unit and chose combat instead. Meanwhile, Stewart beefed up so he could make the weight requirement, leaving Wayne with free reign to become the people's favorite. On the other hand, Cabot feared losing his standing in the industry if he left to join the war effort. Like Wayne, he filed for an exemption, claiming he had mouths to feed, and they might starve if he went to war. Cabot's decision not to enlist was likely influenced by his desire to continue working in the industry and maintaining his status as a leading man. Despite his decision, Cabot remained a respected and beloved actor in Hollywood. He continued to work in films and television shows, often alongside Wayne and other leading actors of the time. His career spanned several decades, and he became a familiar face to audiences around the world. Throughout his career, Cabot demonstrated his versatility as an actor, taking on a wide range of roles in various genres. From westerns to dramas, comedies to action films, Cabot proved himself to be a talented and dedicated performer. His contributions to the world of entertainment continue to be celebrated and appreciated by audiences today. As for Wayne, his decision not to join the war effort did not seem to have a negative impact on his career. In fact, it may have even helped him become more popular with audiences. Regardless, both Cabot and Wayne remained successful and respected actors in their own right, each leaving their own unique mark on the world of film and television. Bruce Cava, an actor known for his rugged masculinity, was rumored to have avoided joining the war effort due to a supposed affair between Duke Wayne and Marlena Dietrich. However, this claim is questionable, as Marlena herself was actively involved in the war, entertaining troops, and potentially engaging in spy work for the Office of Strategic Services. The actor's sole contribution to the war effort was his work in war films, for which he was generously compensated. Despite this, Duke Wayne is said to have regretted not participating in the war. It seems ironic that a man who built his career playing manly characters would shy away from action when it mattered most. It's worth noting that the actor's war films, while not a direct contribution to the war effort, may have played a role in boosting morale on the home front. Nevertheless, the question remains how could an actor, who made his living portraying heroic figures, not answer the call to action when his country needed him? Bruce Cava, an actor who had worked with Errol Flynn in the past, found himself in a difficult situation when Flynn approached him to star in his production of the William Tell story. However, things took a turn for the worse when Flynn's production partners faced financial difficulties. Causing the film to come to a Hey Lieutenant Flynn was in a tight spot, unable to pay the cast and crew who took it in stride. But one man, Bruce Cavaugh, decided to take matters into his own hands. In the midst of Flynn's financial ruin, Cavett took his friend to court, seeking to seize and sell Flynn's personal property to get paid. Flynn was shocked and hurt by his friend's actions. He couldn't believe that the man he wanted to help had betrayed him in such a way. Flynn never forgave Cabot and carried the hurt 
and dispute to his grave. Cabot, on the other hand, blamed Flynn for the way his life turned out. Even in death, Flynn couldn't escape the animosity that Cabot held towards him. The betrayal of Errol Flynn by his friend Bruce Cabot is a classic tale of Hollywood drama, where even the strongest of friendships can be tested by the pressures of the industry. Bruce Cabot, born as Etienne Pellissier Bleuer Jr., had a complicated personal life. Despite his ability to betray friends for opportunities, he pursued love with passion, even if it didn't last. His first marriage was to Grace Mary Mather Smith, but they divorced before he headed to Hollywood. In Tinseltown, he married two actresses, but those unions also ended in divorce after a few years. Cabot's true love, however, was his job. He worked tirelessly in the film industry until a year after his death. In 1972, the actor was diagnosed with lung cancer, which eventually claimed his life at the age of 68. Despite any regrets, he left behind a successful career and never let Hollywood push him aside like it had done to others. Throughout his life, Cabot was deeply committed to his work, and his dedication shone through in every role he played. Even when facing health challenges, he continued to work, showcasing his unwavering passion for his craft. His career remains a testament to his talent and perseverance, leaving a lasting impact on the film industry. Despite the ups and downs in his personal life, Cabot's professional achievements are what truly defined him. His legacy lives on in the many films he graced with his presence, leaving behind a body of work that continues to inspire and entertain audiences to this day. The actor's story is a reminder that, even in the face of adversity, one can still find success and leave a lasting impact on the